Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets. I'm Marky Mark, and today we're gonna to do another little video about the Mercedes Marco Polo camper van. Now in a previous video, we talked about the downstairs seats and how they transform into a, a sort of small double bed. Well, today we're gonna to talk about the upstairs. I do apologize for these shorts, it's pretty hot today. Uh, don't normally like the legs out, so uh, shield your eyes if you're scared of uh, uh, scary things like, like these legs. But yeah, we're gonna talk about how to put up the roof, how much room is up on the top deck, and then how to safely put it back down again. And what happens in an emergency if your roof is stuck up and you wanna drive off your campsite? There's an emergency way of getting the roof down. So we're gonna talk about that. So there's nothing else to say except, let's dig into this. So first things first, how do we get the roof up? Well, it's worth just looking before we start at what you've got with this roof. Um, it's a fiberglass roof, uh, which is uh, provided by Westphalia, um, the camper van makers, in collaboration with uh, Mercedes. And it's obviously sprayed to match the color of the car. There have been some problems with blistering of the roofs. Uh, so blisters in the fiberglass under the paint layer, uh, moisture, I think, causes these moisture droplets to expand. And uh, there has been some cases of the paintwork splitting with these blisters. Now, Mercedes do replace the roof under warranty. Um, and I'm going to do another video on this in the future because what happens when you, your van runs out of warranty? But let's just have a little walk around the camper van roof. I'll just hold the camera up. You can see what it looks like. So you can see this little rubber ridge here, and this is the part that comes up. There are sort of rails in the roof uh, to put a, a roof box or other rails. Um, and then um, as we go around to the back, so This is the sort of gutter on the back, and then the roof does rise up from here. Now, it is an electrical motor-driven system for the pop-top on the Mercedes Marco Polo, uh, the latest version. I think in the past there was a manual pop-top, but that's not an option anymore. You have to have the motor, motorized version. And to be honest, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's one of my favorite things, parking up at the campsite and then uh, activating it. Now you do need the ignition on and it's probably recommended to park on as flat an area as possible. And when the roof goes up, it's higher at the front than at the back. So I typically try and park downwind so that the wind's going from the back to the front. If it's going from the front to the back, you've got this big excess of roof. And then that, you know, there's always the danger that a gust of wind could blow that roof back. So that's something to watch out for. So let's get this roof up. We're pretty flat here. First things first, let's get that ignition on. Okay, a familiar view. Looks like we need some ad blue and that'll be another video in the future. So keys in. To put the roof up, you need to be on the number two position. So one turn and then a second so that all the lights on the dash light up. So in our version of the Marco Polo, we've got this little control panel, and I've talked about this before. So all the camper van functions are accessed through this control panel. And as I said, in the latest versions of the Marco Polo, um, it's all done via the actual Mercedes software. It's called the MBAC systems, Mercedes-Benz Advanced Controls. And that's all done. It used to be the command module. It's all done there. In this 2018 model, uh, and previous to that, it was all done on this little thing here. And uh, you know, it does the job. It's just an LCD display. Uh, probably not as fancy as the, the newer version, but it still does exactly the same job. So to raise the roof, it's accessed from here. We just spin this wheel to show all the icons. Uh, so the, the roof is actually the top right one. You've actually got a little icon of the camper van with the roof up. So we just switch over to that, rotate, and then click in. And it tells me that the roof is currently closed. God, it's such a clever system. 
knows everything. It's almost sentient. Um, and then we just got two controls, open and close. Now to put the roof up, we simply press open and just hold a finger down and you should hear the motor. Absolutely effortless. Like I say, I love this mechanism. It's really, really cool. I guess you could say there's more chance of things going wrong. Anything electrical or motorized has a chance of getting out of calibration or just failing completely. But we haven't had any problem in four years with this roof. There's some telescopic motors that extend out and you just keep going until that motor stops. And then the fabric in the soft top has gone taut. Okay, so let's have a little look at the roof and see what we've got. And I'm being a daredevil here, I'm climbing up some ladders. And not the best with heights, but we can have a look at what we've got. So, this is the roof itself. As I said, it's tilted with the highest point at the front. Um, and it uses this sort of scissor mechanism here with a sort of extending telescopic motor here, which basically drives this backwards and forwards like a pair of scissors and opens it up. And we have this fabric, what's called known as bellows, which is the part of the pop top that creates your protection and covering. The bed is inside here and extends right along the full length of the roof uh, and then the full width as well. So there's no kitchen unit up here like there is downstairs taking up width. Here you get the full width and I'll be showing you inside in a minute. So let's move over to the back of the van. And you've got the same scissor system here but it's just not as, not as large. It doesn't extend as far uh, because the back is lower than the front. Let's look closer at this motor. And I think there's one on both sides which dri drives the scissors. Uh, and the electrical cable for that motor comes along to the back. And then let's see where that goes. Yeah, so it actually goes through a duct here. And you'd hope that there's some sort of sealant here to stop water getting in. We've not had any leaks at all with this. Um, that's pretty much it. You can see the rails a bit clearer now on the roof. Uh, it's a little bit dirty at the moment, but at the moment there's no blisters in the paintwork. I know it might look like there's specks, but that's just uh, dust. Uh, but we had the roof replaced probably a couple of months ago um, because of the blister problem. Okay. So I think we can go inside the van now. This is sat on the rear seat, hello, and uh, just looking up around, what can we see? So first of all, there's this platform here. Now this is your bed, but you can have the roof up and the bed raised. So now we can actually stand up in the camper van, you know, and I'm six foot three and a half, six foot four, something and I can stand up very easily. So the extra headroom provided by the roof being up is really welcome. And when you're parked up like this, it's a nice place to be. Normally, of course, you'd have the front chairs rotated round to make like two facing back and two facing forward. Um, other things to note with the canvas top is that we've got some air vents. So these are just zipped. You can unzip these and that lets greater air flow through. These ribbons are just to sort of maintain the structural integrity. They're sort of like ribs in the canvas uh, or hoops right round the canvas pop top. Uh, and that keeps the integrity as you raise and lower the roof. Um, in summer, the, these vents are really useful. It allows some air flow through, through the van. Uh, in winter, you wouldn't use these at all. And actually in winter, you might want extra protection. So you can buy additional internal covers that can be clipped in uh, to the pop top to provide greater insulation. And you can also get external ones as well. Now we, we haven't used any of these. Uh, I think if you have enough blankets up at the top, you don't really need it. 
Um, now let's take a look at the bed. Now, so this is the bed. I, I know in the VW California, there's some gas struts uh, for raising this. In, in the Marco Polo, it's manual. So it's literally held on by some little straps and a bolt here, and the same on this side. So to lower the bed into a sleeping position, you just need to hold it, hold the bed, and then undo those clips. So I'll try and do that while holding the camera. So I'm unclipping that there, and then this side. So both sides are now unclipped. I'm holding this up with my arm, and then I can just lead, let that drop down with gravity. And we have the bed now. Actually, we store some items up here. We've got some screens uh, for the for the side windows and the uh, front windscreen that we made ourselves. I'll probably do another video on that. Uh, but we can store those up here. So you can store small items, uh, you know, if maybe half an inch thick. They're sort of compressible, so it's not a problem to put the roof down with that. You couldn't put anything big here, like a quilt or anything. Uh, I think it would damage that roof. So let's get rid of these for the purposes of this video, and then we'll climb up. Okay, so we're sat in the back of the Marco Polo now, and the bed itself is down. So you can still sit down here when the bed's down. So someone can go to sleep up at the top and you can still have four people sat downstairs. Uh, yeah, you've got reduced head height, but this is just like if you sat in a van and you're traveling around anyway, because the roof would be down. So the roof's actually up at the moment, but it feels like it's down because we have got the bed down. Uh, let me show that with the camera. Let's rotate this. So yeah, the roof is down, but outside the roof is up. Right, so how do we climb upstairs? Let me just get out of the way of the camera. Now, some people do get a ladder and there is room between the seats here to put a very small ladder, which can then hook onto the bed. So if I now climb up, Hello. Between the seats, we've got the bed up here and we've got the seats. And at the moment, we've got the seats facing forward. And that gives a footrest, really, to climb up. When the seats are around the other way, there's less places to put your feet. Um, but you still can put them on the side of the seats here, on the bolsters. Now, Mercedes recommend you don't put your foot flat in the middle because there's heating elements there and you can damage them but feet here is fine feet on the shoulder is fine so in this case i'm going to place one foot here and one foot at the top and then i'm going up here so i'm keeping my shoes on naughty but they're fairly clean so foot and then typically i just sit around Let's see if i can film this i don't know I just turn around, put one foot up on the top, and then I'm up. So now I'm sat up stairs in the Marco Polo, and what we got, like I said before, we got the vent open, and it's actually a really nice space. And I, I choose to sleep up here whenever I can because it's a much wider uh, bed. I have to get the uh, tape measure again to measure it. Um, let's have a look around at what we got. So up the top, there is a little vent that's permanently open. This is just mesh. And um, we've also got this little thing that can bend down and there's one on the other side as well. So these are just reading lights. There's a button on the back, which you can press a number of times to get the light. So that's once bit dimmer twice, bit dimmer three times, and then off. And these are quite nice actually when you I mean I typically put my legs down the 
towards the boot. I don't like the idea of my head down there, but I will show that. And then I'm here and I'm stretched out here and I'm over one meter 90 and there's plenty of room. So you've, you'd have to be a basketball player to not have much room upstairs in the Marco Polo. Now ignore this uh, markings on the roof. That's actually on the top of the roof. That's from the, um, those blinds that we made. They got silver foil and the silver's just rubbed off, which looks a bit messy, um, but we're gonna get rid of that. Um, so what else have we got? It's worth talking about the mattress. Uh, it's a really comfortable memory foam mattress and it has got a zippable cover so you can wash that luckily. Underneath it's quite interesting. Um, so it's got these sort of bouncy, spongy, sort of rubber supports. They're like springs. So it's sort of a spring, a sprung mattress in a way, you know, with memory foam on the top and then these really cool springs underneath. It's very sturdy and I often sleep extremely well up here. So I've grabbed the uh, tape measure just to measure the upstairs bed. And I've also grabbed this interesting net type thing. Now, I don't really know why Mercedes has supplied this, but it's actually to fill in the gap uh, between the bed and the front of the van. There's a gap which you climb up to to go to bed. And then once you're up there, you can fill that gap with this. So I'll demonstrate that after carrying it upstairs. See you in a minute. Okay, I've got the uh, tape measure. I just want to measure this bed. So let's do that. So the mattress itself is one meter six wide. And then the whole canvas roof is about one meter 25 wide, I would say. Uh, you do have a little gutter down each side, so I put my phone there, or my headphones, or a glass of water or something. In terms of the length of the bed, let's just extend the tape measure down. And it's a hefty 205 centimetres. Yeah, about 81 inches. So yeah. That's at least sort of six foot, six foot nine length. I'm sure I've made a mistake there, I'm not so good at the maths. But yeah, a really long bed and definitely fit for two people upstairs. So, so it's a nice upstairs bed uh, and a real selling point of the Marco Polo because it is so comfortable. Um, now it's worth saying you can sleep the other way, but it starts getting more and more claustrophobic. So I don't know how you feel about that. You know, I guess when your eyes are shut, it feels a bit more stuffy down here. There's no airflow. Um, I guess if you're, if you're parked on land so that this side, the rear of the van is higher than the front and you haven't got any chocks, um, then you might want to sleep like this just so that your head's raised. I hate sleeping with my head feeling lower than my legs. It feels like the blood's rushing to my head. Um, but overall, I don't like this. It's a bit like uh, being buried alive. So I'm getting out. <laughs> Other items to note up on the top, uh, just at the front of the camper van, you've got the gap here down to the cabin. There is a useful USB A socket here. Um, that's the only USB up at the top, but it's all you need really for charging your phone or your Kindle or something at night. Been clever and got my wife to fit that netting. We're both just trying to work it. Out. If it doesn't actually fit, fill this gap, it blocks off the top of the bed to the roof to stop you falling backwards during the night. Not that you would really. It's just for peace of mind. Okay, I've been schooled by my wife how to fit this netting up. And actually it is now very clear. There's these little attachment points on the top of the roof. There's four of them here. And this netting just hooks into those. 
and it basically blocks off the bed so that if you're lying at the top of the bed, you're not going to fall back out here. Now, it is slightly annoying to fit because you've got to stretch it down. Once those are attached, you've got to stretch it down and there's a pop uh, sort of pop connector here which needs to connect down here under the bed. So you've got to pull down and then somehow push that in. Pretty easier to do it on the other side. But, yeah, there we go. So you just do that all along. I'm not going to do it now. It's just too annoying. We never use this thing. And I just don't see that you've got any reasonable expectation of falling out of bed unless you want to put kids up here, I guess, young kids or something to stop them falling out. But to be honest, I wouldn't be doing that. It's worth showing what happens if you try and drive away when the roof is up on the Marco Polo. So if I go back in, now if I start the engine up, what's going to happen? We get a warning noise. Oh, there is an alarm going here. No clear indication of what's causing that alarm, uh, but <laughs> I guess the beeping does tell you that the roof's up. So let's turn that engine off. Right, let's get this roof ready to put down. So we, you have to put the lights back in place. And that's essential. If they're hanging down like this, you could snap them. So you just whack those back up. And then you zip up, zip up the uh, the air vents. Like that. I need to climb up and get the other one. That's that. And once that's done, you're ready to you're ready to go to put that roof down. So let's do that. Okay, putting the roof down is pr pretty much a reversal of what we did putting it up. Again, you need that ignition on and you use that control panel. So let's do it in reverse order. There's a slight different subtlety in that instead of pressing just once when we when we opened we just pressed a single time on the open button and it opened up but now if you press close it doesn't actually close you have to press it once then again and it will start coming down So when everything's working, you just lower the roof like this until it reaches a point where it's about, you know, 30 cent, well, maybe 50 centimeters and it stops by itself. I think this is to give you a chance to check that the bellows are not going to get caught. So this can be a problem on VW camper vans, especially where the, the, the bellows can get caught in the scissors as the roof comes down. But because we've got these struts on the Marco Polo, I've never seen it as a problem. It does get a bit folded and a bit messy here, a bit like bagpuss, but you know, I just get out and tuck that in and then do the same on the other side. And you might want to also do that. So you can see here, you know, there's a chance that that could get caught. So I just, I just tuck it in so that when it comes down, it's not going to get caught and uh, severed. You don't want that canvas getting ripped or torn. So let's go a bit further down. Uh, it's worth noting that whenever you raise or lower a roof, you need a door or a window open because otherwise, as the roof comes down, it, you can get it. If there's no place for the additional air that's being compressed down to escape, 
you can cause problems again with the, the canvas um, getting caught. So it's always recommended to have a window down at least just to let that air equalize. Let's go back to the control panel, across to the camera van, click in that button, press close twice again. And now the roof will make its final journey down. Now often I just stop it just before it reaches there for one final check, just to check that it's not getting, getting caught here. You can see it's a little bit bulging out there, but I think you can worry too much about this sort of thing. Let's just check the other side. And now you can see it's almost nearly completely there. And yeah, I mean, it does stick out, but it's not gonna get caught. You just make sure of that. And then let's just finally do the final stage. You know, and it, it's a two minute job. It's final bit. And at the end, it just comes to this point where you can still see a little gap, but it just keeps turning that motor. And that's the finished thing. So it never closes so that you can't see this bellows just caught there. And that's just the normal state of affairs. But yeah, you could argue it looks a little untidy but that's just the nature of camper vans, I think, with pop tops. So we've had a look at the Marco Polo, putting the roof up, having a look at the upper bed, and putting the roof down in normal operation. Everything's worked well, and it's a really easy mechanism, and it doesn't take too long at all. It's actually my favorite part of the camper van. I love pulling out of a campsite and putting that roof up. It's just, it signifies the start of the holiday. It makes me very happy. I go and crack a, a beer after I've done it, after that hard work. What happens if the roof's up and something's gone wrong with the electrics or, and you can't get that roof down? We're gonna put the roof back up now and then look at the emergency switch for doing that. It's fairly difficult to find, um, but we're gonna help you out on where it is. So let's dig into this again. Roof back up. Now I think there is some limiting factors with putting the roof up and down. You can't keep putting it up and down willy nilly uh, every minute or so. The, the car will, the, the camper van will stop you doing that, the control electronics. I can't remember off the top of my head how many times you can do it before it limits you uh, and then you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can put it up or down again i think it's just to preserve the battery or something so we've got the roof back up again let's look at this emergency button so if your roof is stuck up and you're at a campsite and you want to get away and you can't get it down with the control panel normally you need to find the emergency switch so the way to do that is come down here under the cooker in this cupboard close to where the waste very close to where the waste uh, lever is to empty the waste water now in here there is a little button so i'm going to put the light on my camera here and hopefully we'll be able to see it And then there's a beep. That means the emergency button is activated. So then what do you do? Pressing that button does allow you to incrementally put down the roof. So you go back to that um, control panel. But now the open and close do two different things. The close button will close one side of the roof and the open button will close the other side of the roof. It won't open anymore. So let's start with one of them. Now open is closing one side and it's stopped. Now go to the close, press it twice. Let's put the other side down 10 centimeters. Now I go to the open. Let's put the right hand side, driver's side down 10 centimeters. Press close twice again. 
So it's, it's 10 centimeters each time. One side, then the other. So when you press the open button, you're just pressing it once. It will automatically stop when it's done the 10 centimeters. Then you press the close twice. We're almost down now. I'll do one more and then I'll check the bellows. I'm going to check the bellows now. Be interesting to see if the emergency turns off because it's going to take me. So you can see actually now that that roof is not level. And that's because I've done one side more than the other. So bellows look fine. Let's go back. I need to do the close button now, I think. Twice. Yep. And actually it's fully closing now, so I think, I think that, that, that I'd stop. Oh, and there was a little beep there. And I think we're safely down now. Cool. Okay, so I showed you most of the things about the Mercedes Marco Polo pop-up roof. I've shown you how to put up the roof, how big the bed is up there, you know, the sort of mattress and the nice springy little springs. Under, I don't even know another way of saying springy springs um, that the mattress rests upon. The lights up there, and then also this weird netting to stop you falling out of bed if you're totally paranoid. Uh, and then how do you put the roof back down again? and an emergency way of putting it down if you, all else fails and you, you're at a campsite and something's gone wrong. So that's pretty much all there is to know about the, the roof of the Marco Polo. I hope it's been informative. Now please like and subscribe this video. We're trying our best to uh, grow the channel and put interesting content for all you campers out there. Um, I, there'll be plenty more videos over time, so please keep watching. I've been Marky Mark and that's been Camping Secrets. Thanks for watching. Bye.